Right, um, good evening everyone. I just want to thank Mark and David for inviting me along tonight. Um, as Mark said, my name's Louise Kennedy and I'm currently working as a forensic psychologist in training in a secure psychiatric hospital. Just out of interest, I was just wondering how many of you are thinking of a career in forensic psychology? Yeah, quite a few of you. Brilliant. Okay. So what I'm going to hope to do over the next 10 minutes, really, is just to give a bit of a, an overview of my career to date, explain what my experience has been so far, some of the skills that I've learned, some what qualifications I've needed to get to the point that I am at the moment, um, explain how I've used my undergraduate degree in psychology from John Moores, and also give you a lot of tips, I think, really, from some of the experiences that I've had and things that I've learned as I've gone along that hopefully you can start to, to build into your degree at the moment and also what you're going to plan for in the future as well, if that's OK. OK. So in order to become a chartered forensic psychologist, there's three main stages that you need to go through. First one is to complete a, an undergraduate degree that's BPS recognised. So it needs to be accredited by the BPS. You need to then complete a master's degree, again that's recognised by the BPS and finally complete supervised practice and that's the stage that I'm in at the moment. I'm working to complete my supervised practice so hopefully, fingers crossed, by the end of this year I'll become chartered. That's my New Year's resolution for this year. Um, I completed, as Mark just introduced, I completed my undergraduate degree in uh, psychology with criminal justice. Um, graduate in 2003, which I can't believe is 10 years ago. Um, it doesn't feel that long ago, honestly. Uh, so yeah, completed it in John Moores, and that was an accredited module, accredited degree. So obviously you needed to do certain core modules in order to make sure it's accredited by the BPS. So that's probably one of the first tips I'll give you, is to just make sure when you come into your, your second and your third year that you are choosing modules that will mean that your degree is accredited. Because if you do want to go on and get a career in forensic psychology, clinical psychology, counselling, any other area, you need to make sure you, your undergrad degree is accredited. So make sure you choose the core modules in, in those two years. Um, I got a 2-1 in my degree. It was... It was probably the grade I was aiming for, to be honest. At first, I think it would have been amazing, but I knew that I needed a 2-1 in order to get onto my master's degree. I think throughout my undergraduate degree, I was quite lucky. I always knew that I wanted to do forensic psychology, and I know there's quite a few of you in the audience at the moment who know that that's the career that you want. Um, so I'd, I'd say to you now, just start aiming for a 2-1 or above, because the master's degrees are really competitive. So in order to get a place on a master's degree, you need to make sure you're, you're aiming for that grade, really. So a couple of first tips for you. Um, I think, as Mark said as well, while I was doing my degree, I worked voluntarily every Friday. It was in the Magistrates Court down on Dale Street, so just across the road. Um, just in order to get a lot of experience working within the forensic field. I don't know whether any of you got any work experience at the moment. No? Definitely use this opportunity now. I think it's hard when you're studying and you always think, oh, you might not have enough time, you've got to do your coursework and prepare for your exams, but it's so important that you start looking at what work experience you can get now. There's so many voluntary opportunities out there. There's so many sites on the internet and I'm sure the careers department here will help look for, for placements and you know there's voluntary placements you can get paid work experience but you need to make sure that your CV is going to stand out from everyone else. If you think about how many people are on your course at the moment and how many people are graduating with psychology degrees you need to make sure that there's something different about you so try as you can, where possible to get as much experience as you can with voluntary experience or paid work experience while you're doing your degree because it's going to really make you stand out from everyone else. Um, so as I said, my experience was in the witness service. I assisted victims and witnesses when they were coming to court to give evidence. So I'd show them around the court, explain what the court process was going to be, um, sit with them and support them on the days that they were given evidence. And it was a fantastic experience working within a forensic field. Um, the only problem I encountered really was when I came to actually apply to do my master's course. So as I said, with a master's degree, you need to make sure it's a minimum of a 2-1 in, in your degree. But you also need to make sure you've got 50 hours of work experience with, offend, with the offending population. So obviously I'd spent like, the last couple of years working with victims and witnesses of crime. I'd not really worked with offenders. So I, I couldn't apply for my master's degree at that point. So I knew I needed to start looking elsewhere for, for work experience, really. So that's another point, I'll, another tip I'll give you, really, is if you're starting to look for work experience, obviously within a forensic field, 
anyway, it's going to be really good and valuable experience. But if you want to get on your master's course, start looking at what work you can do with an offending population. And I think, especially even from my perspective when I was in university, when I thought about an offending population, I always used to think about the prison service. And I always used to think, right, when I graduate, I'm going to work for the prison service, which I did end up doing. But it's only now that I'm in the field, there's so many other opportunities and places that you can work where you are actually going to be working with offenders. Um, I'm working in a secure psychiatric hospital at the moment, so there are positions there. You could work as a nursing assistant or a healthcare worker while you're doing your degree um, or after you've finished as well and just get the, that experience. Obviously, you could work as a special with the police service, um, work with young offenders. There's so many varied opportunities available, so it's just making sure that you're Start to be creative about what you're, what you're looking for in the areas that you're, you're thinking about going into. And it's, it's not just the prison service, as I used to think when I, I was studying. Um, so, yeah, definitely start looking at work experience and seeing what you can do now to try and make your CV stand out, really. So, as I just mentioned, about a year after I graduated, I got a, um, a position in the prison service. So I was working in a local prison in Liverpool. Um, where I delivered offending behaviour programmes. So there's a wide variety of offending behaviour programmes delivered within all prisons, but I mainly specialised in substance use. So for the last 10 years, really, I've been working with substance users, both assessment and treatment of substance use. And that's something that I was just saying to someone before, before we came in, I think it was you two girls, wasn't it? I think when I did my undergraduate degree here in John Moores, there was um, a module in third year that looked at drug use. And I had absolutely no interest in, in drug use at that point in my career. So I chose to do other elective modules. Um, but what I think, if I was in the same position now and I was going back, I think I'd probably try and look at what sort of modules would complement the forensic psychology module in third year. It's not just about doing that module. Also think about what other ones might work quite well with it. And I think I will probably go back and do the um, psychosocial drug use um, the one in third year. So definitely think about that as well. Um, I absolutely loved my time in the prison service. I think my skills really developed and I learned so much. There's so many opportunities and things you can do while you're working there as well. Obviously, as I said, I delivered offending behaviour programmes. I was trained as a hostage negotiator. Um, I delivered national training, so I was actually training people around the country to deliver offending behaviour programmes. So there's so many different experiences that I got whilst working there. It was fantastic. Um, and obviously by then, I had my 50 hours of experience working with offenders, so I was able to do my master's degree. So the application went through fine because I'd been in the prison service. I think I'd been in about two years when I applied for a master's degree. So I'd made sure I got my experience to begin with and then applied. And I completed my master's degree part-time. So I was working full-time in the prison service and completed my master's degree part-time of an evening. So I was quite lucky, really, that the lectures were in the evening because it did give me that opportunity to, to do both, really. And that really helped in terms of funding. So I think if any of you are thinking, oh, no, you know, I do want a career in forensic psychology and no, I'm going to have to do the master's degree and you're worried about how you're going to fund that, it is possible to do both. You know, you can work full-time. That'll give you the the money to save to actually afford to do the degree and then do the degree part-time as well in the evening. So it is hard work, you know, it does take a lot of determination to get to the end, but it is possible you can do it and it's worth it, I think. Um, so, yeah, try and look at ways you can manage funding your master's degree as well. So, yeah, I was in the prison service for five years and unfortunately the prison service, uh, the prison that I was in didn't have a psychology department. So I was delivering psychological interventions to prisoners. I was working there for five years, but I knew my career wasn't really going to progress anywhere. There was nothing else I could do. I wanted to be a forensic psychologist. I was practicing, um, you know, working with offenders and delivering psychological intervention. But in terms of progressing with my career, there wasn't anything else I could do at that point. So I knew I needed to start look at other, looking at other options. And in 2008, I was quite lucky because the position that I'm currently working in now came up, which is for a forensic psychologist in training within a secure psychiatric hospital. So at the moment, I work with patients who are in low and medium security. I've worked with both men and women um, who've got mental illness and or personality disorder. So as you can see, I mean, just guess from 
from that really every day is completely different and varied and it's, it's so much to learn and so many other skills that I can start to develop really in this role. So as I said right early on, you need to do your undergrad degree, make sure it's accredited, your master's degree that's accredited and also supervised practice. And that's the point that I'm in at the moment, really, is working on supervised practice. And when I say supervised practice, you need to be practising at a chartered level, but you just make sure that you're always getting supervision. Um, so I'm always supervised, and you need to submit. It's eight exemplars, which are like, I suppose, the equivalent of like a master's degree dissertation. It's quite a lot of work to show that you are competent in, in the area that you're um, working, really. Uh, so... That's what I'm still working towards at the moment and hopefully it'll all be submitted and sent in by the end of this year, um, fingers crossed. So in my role that I'm in at the moment, I'm still delivering offending behaviour programmes, I'm doing both group and one-to-one -one work, but it's so much more varied than it was in the prison service. I've st I'm still trained as a hostage negotiator, but touch wood, I've, not, uh, I've only ever done one, one of them, that was when I was back in the prison service. Um, there's risk assessments, you do them very, very regularly, uh, both violence and sexual violence risk assessments, cognitive functioning assessments, um, you develop and deliver training, there's still a big research element, so when I said before you need to submit eight exemplars, two of those exemplars are pieces of research, um, so you will be continuing with research um, throughout your career as well. Um, Supervising other people, so you'd be supervising other staff to deliver psychological interventions and there's also writing hospital policies, um, we attend meetings regularly to discuss patients' treatment pathways and their risk management plans, so I think as you can tell from like some of the roles that I undertake, it is so varied, it's so interesting I think every day is completely different you just don't know what to expect when you're going to work in the morning because you might have something planned but by the end of the day you've done a completely um, loads of different tasks that you're not really expected um, so I think you've as you probably guessed from from this really the role of forensic psychology and becoming a forensic psychologist it is a long process it, it does take a lot of hard work and determination but I personally think it's a fantastic career. I really enjoy it um, and I'd recommend it to all of you. I think you do need to be motivated though and that's one thing is it is long. You need to start looking at what sort of experience you can get now um, but it's definitely, I think it's a fantastic career to, to go into. Um, and I think my, if we think about my degree in psychology, I think it gave me a really good underpinning of psychological theory great research ethic. I think most importantly, it motivated me for a career in psychology, motivational and inspiring. And I don't think I probably would have been here today and be in this career if it wasn't for the support and the, the, the staff at John Moores as well.